Hello and welcome to this Pivotal software tutorial. Today we will be installing and using Pivotal Container Service, PKS, on VMware vSphere and NSXT. PKS is enterprise grade Kubernetes, so what's that mean? PKS is designed to simplify how enterprises deploy, manage, and run Kubernetes on any cloud. It enables application teams to self-provision these clusters that are fully managed on their behalf. It provides HA, monitoring, and health checks to ease day two operations. Now let's take a look at the components that make up PKS. The first, now obviously a core component, is the fully open source distribution of Kubernetes. It allows for constant compatibility with the latest stable releases of the Google Kubernetes engine. Next is the PKS control plane. This is the CLI and API used to create, operate, and scale the Kubernetes cluster. The GCP service broker allows developers to easily connect to Google cloud-based services like machine learning and spanner. NSXT provides a public cloud networking experience within your own data center. It replaces the flat network in Kubernetes with a modern software-defined network. It allows creation of virtual routers, switches, load balancers, and much more. VMware Harbor is an enterprise class registry for storing, maintaining, and distributing container images. The entire environment is built on Bosch for simplified deployment, scaling, and self-healing. This is a high-level look at the architecture we will be deploying. The environment's been pre-configured with NSXT and Pivotal Operations Manager. We deployed a T0 router inside NSX that will handle all inbound and outbound traffic. Then we have T1 routers for each network we will deploy within NSX. For this tutorial, I have created a management network for Operations Manager in Bosch and a service network where PKS will be deployed. We'll now walk through the installation of Pivotal Container Service, PKS. We'll start in Ops Manager. PKS package has been preloaded into Ops Manager and is ready for configuration. Click on the plus sign to install the tile. When the tile appears, click on it to begin its configuration. First we'll configure the networks to use. As you saw in the diagram, we use the management and the services network. Click save and move on to the next step. Now we need to configure a certificate to secure the PKS API connections. Since this is a demo environment, we can generate a self-signed certificate that's valid for the services in our domain. This demo will use PKS attached to our domain, techmark.lab. Click generate to generate the certificate. and save. We now need to configure up to three different size plans for Kubernetes deployments. I'm going to accept the defaults here for most of the options, although we will set the availability zone that we want to use. Click save and then move on to the next plan. We'll do the same, setting availability zone here, and then accept the defaults. Click save. And now move to the third plan, which in our case is set as inactive. Then we can go set up our Kubernetes cloud provider. In our case, our IaaS solution is vSphere, so we select that, and then we're given the option to enter our vSphere credentials. The IP address of our vCenter host, then the data center name, the data store name, and a folder to store our VMs that are created, all from within vSphere. Then we can click Save and move on to our networking configuration. This is where we'll select the NSXT networking stack and give PKS all the details that NSX install. We'll add the NSX manager IP address and the credentials for that host. And then we need a cert so that we can communicate with that NSX manager. To get this, we'll have to pop out to a terminal and log into NSX manager. You can SSH into the NSX manager using the admin user. And then we'll run the get certificate API command. 
This returns a certificate that we can then cut and paste into the PKS installation UI. So once we have the certificate, we cut and paste. Uh, we're going to disable SSL certificate verification since we have self-signed certificates. We'll enter our vSphere cluster name. We'll need the ID of our T0 router in NSX. We can go to the NSX UI to get that information. Click routing, locate the T0 router, and then you can get the ID from that page. We cut and paste that back into our operations manager UI. Then we need to get the block of IPs that we're going to be using for our Kubernetes cluster. It's our IPAM block. Get that ID, cut and paste that back into Ops Manager. And then we need the floating IP pool. This is our network address translation addresses that we're going to use for Kubernetes. So we can get that ID and we'll cut and paste that back into the Operations Manager UI. Click Save. Now we'll move on to the UAA section. That stands for User Account and Authentication. We'll give it a URL. This is the URL of our PKS API. So api.pks.yourdomain. We can click Save. We won't be configuring syslog for this demo. Under errands, we'll need to change our NSX validation errand to on. This will make sure NSX is properly configured for PKS to operate. We'll click save. Check the resource config. We'll accept those defaults. Now we'll make sure we have the proper stem cell uploaded. In this case we do. Click installation dashboard to go back to the dashboard then apply changes to start the PKS install. Once the install starts, you can watch it with verbose output. And I've done some time compression here to make this go a little quicker. Once that's complete, we'll get a changes applied pop-up. We click return to installation dashboard and we should see PKS with the green tile. Next, we'll be creating a PKS management user. This user has access to the API and can create Kubernetes clusters. For this, we'll use the UAA CLI. So we want to target that API server that we set up in the PKS configuration. We'll log in as admin. And to get its credentials, you can go back into the Ops Manager UI, go to Credentials, and grab the UAA admin secret. Then we can create a user inside of UAA. So I'll create dbasket with my email, with my password. And now I have a user created. Now we wanted to make that user a member of the PKS cluster admin group. And we should be able to log into the PKS cluster. Log into the PKS API, give it our user and the password we created. And we're logged in. Now we can check some of the other PKS commands to make sure they all work properly. Now that we have everything running, we can go build a Kubernetes cluster with PKS. Our first step in our Kubernetes cluster build will be to allocate an IP address for our PKS master. So some environment variables we need to set to be able to use our NSX command line tool. 
We'll source those. Then we can use the NSX CLI command to allocate an IP address from our NAT pool to use as the Kubernetes master. So we run the allocate command. We get 10, 195, 19, 135. Then if we look in the NSX UI at our NAT pool, hit refresh, we'll see that that 10, 195, 19, 135 has been allocated. We'll go back to the command line and we'll take a look at the PKS create cluster command and the options that it requires. See, we can give it an external host name, a plan, a couple other options. Uh, in this case, we're going to take a look at the plans that we have available. We we'll do PKS list plans. See, we have a small and medium, and we'll create a cluster. We'll give it a name, in this case, Iron Man. And we give it an external host name. And this is the IP address that we got from the allocate command we ran earlier. We'll choose a plan. And our cluster configuration is kicked off. See it's in progress, so we'll watch it. And I sped this time up as well, so we don't have to wait for it to finish creating. So while we're waiting on that, we can open another tab and go take a look at our vCenter installation and watch what's happening at that level. So I'll log into vCenter. And once that comes up, we'll take a look at our cluster and our resource pool, and we'll see some VMs have been created. But look at the summary of those. See that you can see that they are on my services network. Dot two dot twenty through twenty two. So those will be my four Kubernetes hosts in my small cluster. And then return to the command line and wait for my cluster to finish creating. It's now succeeded. You can see our master IP address is dot twenty and the external NAT address is 19.135. So if I check PKS clusters command, I see my clusters succeeded in creating. If I want a little more detail, just give it the PKS cluster command with the name. And this information is important because now I need to use the NSX CLI command to create a network address translation rule to pair those addresses up. So NSX CLI NAT create rule given my cluster UUID, my Kubernetes master IP for internal and external. And now I have a NAT rule created to get to my Kubernetes master. So if I look in the NSX UI on my T0 router NAT rules, I can see that NAT rule was created on the T0 router. Next we'll actually want to use our cluster. So we need to get the credentials for the cluster from the PKS API. And once we do that, those are loaded into the kubectl config and we can use kubectl commands for the cluster now. So kubectl get pods minus all namespaces will show us all the pods currently on the cluster. And if we want to use the GUI for Kubernetes, we can issue a kubectl proxy, which will then proxy to our local host. And we can visit that URL and check out the GUI for Kubernetes. When we first visit, it's going to ask us for our kubeconfig file can load that config file and then the UI will have access to our cluster. Look at the nodes, the namespaces, and now we can deploy a sample workload to the Kubernetes cluster. In docs.pivotal.io in the PKS documentation, we'll see a sample spec file for an Nginx app. So we'll download that spec file. In 
and then issue the cube cuddle command create and then give it that spec file and that will create the pods for that deployment I can do a cube cuddle get deployments and we'll see there's Nginx and if we look in the UI deployments see it there as well if I look at the services we'll see the external endpoint that's actually one of our NAT addresses we'll see that when created the deployment Kubernetes actually created the load balancer and virtual server inside NSXT for that service so if we visit that URL we'll see Nginx is running And that concludes our tutorial on installing and using Pivotal Container Services on VMware vSphere and NSXT. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me on Twitter at dbbasket. Thanks for watching.